Hi there. I'm in desperate need for better organization of the mess of cables lying around, especially UREC patch cables and a few line level jack cables as well. Looking around what the internet has to offer, especially comp style cable holders seem to be very common, though they don't seem to provide enough storage space for my use cases. I know that I don't want to move the cables within angled slices, so some designs are immediately removed from the shortlist. In the end, this type of cable holder gained my interest. But of course, this is a DIY channel, so let's see how to make one on our own. Can we use PCB manufacturing capabilities for that? Two options come to my mind. We can either use FR4 material, but then in 2mm thickness and 300 times 300 mm This comes around 120 bucks. But maybe we can take the opportunity to learn about the aluminum PCB they offer since a while. They only come in 1.6mm and choosing black solder mask it seems to be even cheaper. Let's keep in mind that aluminum PCBs are only single sided in terms of electrical layers, but for a cable holder we do not have to care about that. This may be the time in this video to claim I do not get any money from this manufacturer. I just compared many of them, even local suppliers, and this one simply gives me the best bang for the buck right now. Alright, how would we approach the PCB design for the cable holder then? I do not feel like drawing hundreds of comp tooth by hand. This would be a horrible exercise, especially when it goes to tweaking sizes and measurements afterwards. But I think there's a much better way to do it. Let's use the PCB new Python interface. Using KeyCut, to shape your PCB board outline, all you have to do is creating some drawings on the so-called edge cuts layer. Typically, rectangles are used. But any shape can actually be applied using elements such as lines, or arcs. And these elements can also be created using the Python API integrated within PCB new. To get in touch with the Python API interface, you can go to Tools, Scripting Console. This opens an additional window. And the first thing that you should do is import all the binding classes from Python. This is done using from PCB new import star. Before we go now deeper into the subject, there's one important thing you should understand. The smallest unit in PCB new is one nanometer. That means in order to provide sizing in millimeters, you have to multiply any value given by a million. Now the binding classes support you in this task. For example, there's a constant given that you can acquire for the unit conversion, but also additional helpers can be quite handy depending on what you want to do. For example, from millimeter, I give a one, and this will return the size of a single millimeter in nanometers. Okay, so from here, the next thing that we can do is we acquire a handle to the board, and this is done hitting get board. So B is now a reference to the PCB board we are currently looking at. Let's create a line. The line will start from 100, 100. And let's end it at 200, 100. Now we create a line shape. 
and this line shape is then provided with the start point and it requires a line width which can be set using set width and here we use the from millimeter helper command and the typical line size is dot one millimeter on the edge cuts layer. Then we assign this object to the layer and this is called edge cuts. And finally we need to add the new element to the board. That's not very con convincing, we don't see anything on the board. Well, there's one last thing that we need to do. We need to refresh or redraw the board. Et voila, here's our line. Similar thing goes, for example, with a circle. Let's create a circle. Call it circle and it's using PCB shape, providing the port and the shape T is now circle. I will reuse the same starting point but I want to create a smaller radius and this is why I copy the line from above. So it's only 50 millimeter step to the right. Okay, and then our circle is to the start point. So start, start, and end. end. Okay, so it needs a width again. Set width. One millimeter. One. Small typo. Then we add the circle to the board and refresh again. Oh, I added the board to the board. <laughs> I'm sorry. So circle, of course. And here's our circle. So let's create an arc. And it's acquired from PCB shape class again. And the shape type is now arc. Create new points now and arcs are quite special. The main definition of the arcs are those three coordinates where the arc is going along. So there's a start point, a midpoint, and an end point. And those points need to be defined now in the Python script. So we start with maybe I can reuse some lines from here. Start point will be 150. And then we create a midpoint. The midpoint is 100, 100. And the end point is 200, 200. The R class provides a special command that lets us set the geometry in a single line. So you provide the start, the mid, and the end point. Let's move on to the layer assignment and assign the width one millimeter dot one. That was the auto completion. Sorry for that. And then we add the arc to the board and we refresh. And here's our arc. Okay, then let's try something a little bit more sophisticated maybe. And I would like to start now with a set of coordinates and now we create a loop that will run along those coordinates and create lines in between those points. So it's actually a four step loop and by the end we should end up with a square object on the edge cuts layer. For P and range and we provide the length of our C array and now the start point is yes. I the x size in millimeters. So 
this is one of those helper classes that automatically convert millimeters to nanometers, but now it's a two elements object, it's a point. So C, looking at the coordinate. That was accepted, now let's refresh the board. And here's our square. Moving to the 3D viewer. This is now the first programmatically created shape for our new PCB. Now, that was a lot of typing, but unfortunately, every time PCB news restarted, it will not remember what happened in the scripting console during the last session. There is a better way to preserve your work. Using Python, you can create your own PCB new plugins. From the menu, you can pick Tools, External Plugins, and Reveal Plugin Folder in Finder, this is on Mac, or in Explorer on Windows, for example, and on Linux. It will just open the location where PCB New is expecting Python plugin scripts, if you will. I have my editor open at exact this location and I prepare the script for demonstration. Let's first see it in action and then learn how it works. Let's again go to Tools, External Plugins and refresh the plugins. You go back to Tools, External Plugins and you will now see that there's a new plugin appearing in the menu called My Awesome Plugin. Let's hit it once. Okay, let's see how it works. Again, you need to import all the classes from PCB new, and then you create a new class that is an instance of Action Plugin. You can name your class however you want. I used my awesome plugin here, and then there's a method you need to define. It's called defaults, and with the defaults, you set name, category, and description. The next method, run, here you can start building your own code. The first thing I typically do is I create a reference to the board using the getBoard method. And from here you are free to draw something, whatever you want. Let's first jump over the methods that I built in this sample. Uh, down below there is another line which is quite crucial. So after you have created your drawing class, your plugin class, you need to register the plugin in within PCB new and that's how you do it. You create an instance of your plugin and call the register method. That's it. You're done. I thought it would be very helpful if I start with some basic drawing helpers. I have methods to draw lines, drawing circles, draw arcs and all the relevant parameters that need to go into the methods they are prepared to be used as input variables. For some of them, like the layer and the line width, I have default values in place. I know that I want to create shapes on the edge cuts layer and I want them to be .1 millimeters in line width. And the rest should look quite familiar to you if we remember what we have done in the scripting console before. Next, I think it is very helpful to have a center definition where you can create a, a separate coordinate system for anything that you want to draw. And the helper methods will just respect this center variable within their calculations of the absolute coordinates within the drawing. So the first section is centering to 100, 100, and we draw a line, we draw a circle, we draw an arc and this is the kind of stuff that we see on the left. Then we have a little offset to the right. And here I use the idea from our console example where we have a set of coordinates. We create a loop on those coordinates. But now things are much more easy because I can now simply call draw line and everything else is performed within the subroutine. And this square is the result of that. The second example showcases a few ideas that were crucial for the cable holder script I ended up with. A new item is the clear method that will remove any shape found on the edge cuts layer.
This way we can always replay the script on an existing PCB and it will automatically clear the edge cuts layer for us. Next, the drawing algorithm is built in a way that each shape will start with the end coordinates of the previous shape. This way we ensure that a consistent PCB board outline is created. Finally, additional helper methods are used to draw all the shapes in a central symmetric way. That is, using these methods, each shape will be drawn twice, using the original and then the central symmetric coordinates around the self.center coordinate pair. Let's see it in action first and then learn how it works. Using the central symmetric helper methods, we actually only need to calculate half of the coordinates for our shape and the other half is simply mirrored around the center coordinates. That is, first the upper left corner, then the upper border, then the upper right corner and finally the right side. We have now created the first edge cuts drawing for rounded corner PCB board outline. Let's check it in the 3D viewer. Looking at the final cable holder script, many things already seem familiar, such as the clear method, the coordinates management, or the central symmetric approach, and other items were added, such as methods to render pads, the injection of footprints from external keycard libraries, and the more complex code to create all the cable holder comp teeth. But overall, I want to encourage everyone interested to take a deeper look and try to adapt and reuse this idea for your own purpose. Tell me in the comments what you came up with. Here's the final result of the cable holder design. the cable holder plate, I'm using a cheap microphone stand with a boom for 15 bucks. Anything alike will just do fine. Note the retainer bumps at the end of each slot to prevent the cables from slipping off. I will admit though that the slot edges are a little sharp and carving, obviously they do not apply any beveling during the rotting process. Besides of that, the cable holder is ticking all the boxes and does a great job for me. In the end the price was actually similar to the FR4 with 2mm thickness we saw earlier and the manufacturer put an extra charge for extended rotting efforts which is totally in line with their terms. If you are interested to obtain the cable holder, feel free to visit my Etsy shop, where I am going to sell them in small batches. This will definitely help keeping things going. Thanks and see you next time. <laughs>